look at the fancy lighting. It's fish at six at four in Las Vegas. I'm Mike Fisher, your trusted and trustee reporter. I don't know if that looks good or bad. Uh, it's awfully fancy here at uh, the Mandalay Bay is where we're hanging out, <clears throat> media center and whatnot. Is that cool or irritating? I don't know. It almost looks heavenly, doesn't it? Uh, um, this is not the fishbowl, nor is this the star. We are in Las Vegas for the Super Bowl. I think this is Super Bowl number 26 for me, dating back to uh, 1986, starting out there. And even though uh, it's glamorous and glorious and glitzy, we're still going to do it the way we always do it. Fish at six, top 10 takes. These are not uh, hot takes. These are simply fact-based opinions uh, based, again, on years' experience covering the NFL and 34 covering the Cowboys. And I hope uh, sound-wise this works for you. Uh, Tony Fisher is in the house, so is Jim Laws, and so maybe are uh, somewhere upwards of 70,000 fish heads in Cowboy Nation, and away we go. We will do uh, tomorrow, by the way, uh, breakfast at Fish and Ease will be at 7.20, my time in Las Vegas, so 9.20, your time, and we'll get a chance to visit with Cowboy and NFL dignitaries as uh, they hang out around here. Let's go item one, ding. Shady, using the A word. Um, this is going to be a big week for the Cowboys in a lot of ways. The NFL doesn't want the Cowboys to steal their thunder, the Super Bowl thunder, but uh, the Cowboys are the Cowboys. And so one of the things that's going to happen, in addition to the hiring of a defensive coordinator, which we'll get to in a moment, is the Thursday night NFL honors. And the Cowboys will be uh, very much on center stage, partly because some of them will do center stage things, <clears throat> Micah, who we'll also get to in a minute, and some of them because uh, Dak Prescott, for instance, is just a lightning rod. And here we go with Shady McCoy kind of apologizing. What? Wouldn't that be special? Uh, he goes on Fox Sports 1, FS1, and his whole bit, of course, is saying that Dak Prescott, he doesn't analyze his uh, strengths or weaknesses, uh, failures or successes. He just says Dak is ass. That's that's his that's his thing, and he thinks he's hilarious. So Shady now comes out and says, "You know, I didn't know what I was doing when I was saying that. I was new to the profession. I'm raw. I'm learning." He says, "What I should have said is." Dak plays like ass. Oh, yeah. That's completely different level of analysis. Um, we have talked about here how, wait, what, what if we could just ignore all that? The problem is, as it relates in part to the Cowboys and as it relates to the national media, it's, it's so, um, there's such a preponderance of it. It would, it would be really hard to talk about uh, the Cowboys and views of them while ignoring the ignorant. So we'll only do it a little bit. Ding, item two. Uh, our friend Peter King is talking about major surgery on the contract of Diggs. No, not Trayvon, on Stefan. And that has set off another uh, gigantic round. You know, it's the butterfly effect. You know, you throw a pebble into the ocean. And the next thing you know, Stefan Diggs is getting traded to the Cowboys. What what Peter and, and Peter King, longtime friend of mine, he didn't make this up himself. He got it from somebody in the Bills front office, obviously. What he leaves out of this, and we talk about this a lot too, show your work. How, how are you going to get there? Are the Bills going to go to Shady McCoy and say, we want to cut your contract down? I don't think that's going to go well. And if and only if that's really their approach. Uh, and, and by the way, Peter reports he's going to be unhappy if that happens. And that's an educated guess. I don't think that's unfair. You would be, too. Hey, we're going to take your $27 million salary and we're just going to reduce it. Cool. I mean, you like it here, don't you? And you like Josh Allen, don't you? And we have a championship caliber roster, don't we? 
So can we just take then and only then, if and when they really do go to him and say, we, we want you to volunteer to take a real pay cut. We're not talking about now a, a massaging of your contract where we're moving money. We're not talking about base to bonus. We want you to take a, because that doesn't really, that doesn't really save the organization, saves the organization cap room for a year. But as we talk about a lot, you still have to pay the cap. <clears throat> Only then will we start talking seriously about the idea of a digs trade. And even then, there is still the matter of $31 million that's got to go somewhere. It's got to be handled somewhere. Uh, I would also uh, I, I would also caution the Cowboy locker room against clicks. And I think, you know, brother playing on the same team with brother, that's cool. But I also think it's, I, I just think, and not specifically of these two guys, I think any two guys, I think it's, I think it's dangerous. It's funny when the brothers talk about, well, someday we're going to play together. And we all assume, and I think they assume, that means Dallas. If if you really want to play together that bad, maybe Trayvon should ask to go to Buffalo. And you don't see that happening, do we? Do you? You don't. Item three. Ding. Austin Eckler. He has already said he can see the writing on the wall. He's a free agent with the Chargers. He, he's not... That's not happening there. One of the reasons he thinks it's not happening there is because he already knows they don't want to pay him. He tried to get paid the last two years, uh, and they didn't change anything substantial in his contract. So now he's a free agent. He's 28. Uh, I, I, one of the, I think it's Pro Football Focus projected him like a two-year deal at $10 million, $7 million. No. Oh, and and then making the connection with Dallas. That's not happening here. Not like that. Here's what can happen. I continue to be told by the Cowboys that if you're a betting man, Fish, if you're a betting man, you should bet on us drafting a run, a, a starting running back rather than signing a big name that we've heard of. OK, I'm sticking with that. <clears throat> I, I don't I, I'm not poo pooing completely. The idea of Jerry being all in the credit card cowboys. We'll see. Yes, Chris Newman. I'm working in a kissing booth. It's a Duncan booth and a kissing booth. Want to spin the wheel? Brrr. Somebody will. Uh, Fish, what's up with uh, Tyler's plantar fasciitis surgery? Uh, remember, and I haven't asked specifically about that, but the view on that thing was <clears throat> that the Partial tear is better than a full tear, and then uh, that you can play on it. So let me put that on the list. That and Mozzie Smith's weight are my two things that I have on the hot list that you guys have asked me about. Francisco Hernandez, Fish, give me the scoop. Straight dope. What? Straight dope, no bullshit. Yes, that's how we'll do it. Here's what could happen at running back, though, in terms of a name running back. Look at the game of musical chairs. VJ, let's go all in and get Henry. And I, we don't have to name all of them. Singletary with the Texans, free agent. Pollard, free agent. Saquon, free agent. Josh Jacobs, free agent. Derek Henry, free agent. Austin Eckler, free agent. What, what was that, seven guys? that all think they're gonna make $10 million APY, and they're not. So the Cowboys could theoretically win the game of musical chairs. It would mean waiting, and it might be getting, it might mean that you get the seventh best one out of that group, but also, and, and I, I should look up, it's a, it's a longer list than that, but we just rattled off six or seven names. All six and seven of those guys, they're sitting there right now saying, I'm a, I'm a $16 million running. Oh, I'm not? Okay. I'm a $12 million. Run. Oh, I'm not? I'm a 10 mil They're not all going to be 16, 12, and 10. They're not. And maybe that's where you get your name running back because it's the last guy on the shelf who's still good, 
and there's not enough chairs in the game of musical chairs. Stephen White, let's get two out of that group. Are the running backs? Uh, Max, Saquon's too expensive? Yes. And injury prone. I, I, I think Saquon Barkley is fantastic. Joey, it's amazing when you put Dak in historical perspective how much people hate on him. He is, the, the in my, again, 40 years, even though I look like such a young man, I have never come across a player who is the center of more divisive arguments than him. Never. Not even close. I can't think of this. Um, I can't think of the next guy who's, who is an MVP candidate, and he sucks all at the same time in the court of public opinion. Cali Cowboy, Fish, the show is on the road. Are you staying at Circus Circus? I, I am not. I am not. Paul Gale, please don't forget to hit the like button. Yes, do that. Fish, you are our favorite pescado. Uh, Goose Woodson, Tony Romo, not like this. Not like this. Um, the debate over Tony Romo now is, is he going to the Hall of Fame or not? Not is he going going to the Hall of Fame versus does he suck? Item four. This is a sensitive one. Uh, we brought up uh, the, the issue of race in sports the other day. Not everybody loved it. Um, that doesn't frighten me off doing it. Um, but I'm not going to raise my voice about it. Stephen A. Smith the biggest, loudest voice in sports media, not just at ESPN, is suggesting that the Washington hiring of Cliff Kingsbury is racist. But, you know, like, what's he done? Uh, black folk could never get a break like that and that sort of thing. I'm not going to argue uh, one way or the other. I am going to point out facts. Uh, Bryce Kading, can you get my chat? Uh, really, it, uh, it's a challenge, but I, it, it, given the circumstance, but I will do my best. There's Bryce. Uh, I don't know the answer to that question. Put that on my hot list too. I don't know why. I don't understand. I mean, I don't know why you would, but since you're asking it, there must be a good reason. Uh, let me let me check on that one too. Let's do the Houston Texans, who've been accused of the same thing. It's a racist organization. If the last three head coaches they hired have been black, how can they be racist when they fired them, but not racist when they hired them? It doesn't add up. In the case of Stephen A. Smith, and I'm not I'm not bashing him. I I, I understand as best I can where he, the, the, the seat that he sits in. I don't think Stephen A. Smith's even aware that yes, they did hire a young, young retread in Cliff Kingsbury. Uh, and you can do good old boys network on Cliff Kingsbury if you want to. The, the, the white offensive coordinator. But he's been a head coach. And at the same time that Dan Quinn did that, he hired, and I, again, I don't think Stephen knows this. He hired a black defensive coordinator who's never been a head coach or a defensive coordinator in our friend Joe Witt. So, how, how can you, how can you be racist when those are the two coordinators you hired? And then I will defend the Washington organization too. And um, it's not easy to defend the Dan Snyder regime. Their head coach that Dan Quinn just replaced was a person of color. Their general manager, Martin Mayhew, is a person of color. And one of the guys, one of the power brokers who decided to hire Dan Quinn is Magic Johnson. And I don't think, Stephen, I think, I, I just think we need to be careful when we're yelling racism. I think, I think we, we need to have all our ducks in a row. 
because it's the kind of accusation that sticks. And I think when Stephen A. Smith does this, um, well-meaning as he might be, he's doing this without enough information. Probably doesn't know about Magic Johnson. Probably didn't occur to him about Rivera and Mayhew. And he probably has never heard of Joe Witt Jr. In fact, not probably. He's never heard of Joe Witt Jr. Item five, ding. Uh, Tony Romo, going to be speaking a lot. Uh, he'll he'll be a part of a press conference tomorrow, by the way. Tony Romo, of course, he'll be the, uh, the star of the show in the broadcast booth on Sunday for CBS. Friend of the show, Tony Romo. Jeff C., here's a $20 pitch into the brief fund for the drinks budget. Oh, boy. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, and I, I'm not much of a gambler, but if I gamble enough, the drinks are free. Of course, I lose the $20 the first time I bet on something. Thank you, Jeff. I appreciate that. So one of the things that Romo said this week that I find fascinating, it's about the criticism of him. And he uses the parallels. He says, it's kind of like with Mahomes and kind of like with Tiger. Wait a minute, where are we going here? Is Romo comparing himself to Mahomes and Tiger? Kind of. What he's saying is, my ver he's saying his version of my shiny new toy. When Tony, when, when Mahomes, Mahomes is getting to the point now, and he even said it yesterday, where he's starting to feel like he's the villain. And he's fine with it because now he's been there so often that the audience is on the verge of starting to get sick of him, kind of like Tom Brady. And what Romo, and I thought this was very astute of him, there, there's this there's this arc, this story arc. Tiger Woods comes along initially and he's beloved. Tiger Woods gets to the top and we're looking for his feet of clay. And of course, boy, did he have them. Tiger Woods sinks to the bottom. You start to feel sorry for him a little bit and we start to root for him again. Story arc for Tiger Woods. And Romo has experienced some of that. Romo was, the, the, nobody had been, nobody had gone in a national television football color job and been more of a darling faster than Tony Romo. Not John Madden, didn't, wasn't a darling, as much of a darling this fast as Tony Romo has been, was but isn't anymore. You're not a darling anymore. Now he's got critics coming out of the woodwork. And Romo's saying, my arc, I understand it. I was a darling and now people are looking for my flaws. Uh, and, and it really is, it's not Romo saying, look at me, I'm just like Mahomes. Look at me, I'm just like Tiger. He's talking about the story arc and he's right. Item, ding, there is a method to Micah's madness, what is it? He is the number one NFL jersey sale. The Micah Parsons jersey is the most popular NFL jersey of 2023. <sighs> Maybe he kind of knows what he's doing. Item seven, uh, Jets SI talking about uh, how much Aaron Rodgers would be aided there, good old Stinky, by the Jets signing Tyron Smith. Diddly diddly dink, what? Tyron Smith, the Tyron Smith that we know, friend of the show, friend of Marsh's, um, like New York isn't necessarily his thing. And I wonder if if the Cowboys, if the Cowboys did say, let's, let's, let's call it a day. And I think it's a tougher decision than other people think. Other people are saying, gotta have Tyron. You've, you've heard me talk about, but you're going to be you're going to be giving him the keys to the car and you're not sure he can drive all the time. I hope I'm not being harsh at 33. By the way, he played extremely well last year and he didn't miss any more games than the next schmo. They came up, of course, with the Romo Wednesday, Tyron Wednesday for him, and it worked out great. I wonder if, if Tyron is faced with, you want to come to the Jets? Or... Just want to retire and chill. I wonder if that's a wrestling match for Tyron Smith. We'll keep you posted. Ding, item uh, eight. Lance, Trey Lance might be a bust, but he is not a waste. 
That is not a wasted year. That was not a wasted trade. The Cowboys have a plan for him. He is not on the roster bubble. He's, his salary, $5.3 million, is guaranteed for 2024. Why would you cut him? It's a guaranteed salary. It, it, even, only if a, another third-string quarterback came in here and was way better than him would you even think about it. But at a guaranteed $5.3 million, you you have to keep him. And you should keep him because he remains a prospect. Uh, the number of people who said they should, just, they should have got him into a game last year. You can't. It's illegal to just say, ah, let's put Lance in. It's it's against the rules. It was not a wasted year if you think about how much time he spent with Mike McCarthy uh, and this coaching staff, Shoddy and others, uh, Scott Solzine and Dak himself. There There is a future for Trey Lance here. He is either the most likely the short-term third stringer, the short-term second stringer, the long-term under contract second stringer, or he shows something in training camp and then in preseason games, and you trade him for something more than a fourth-round pick. Remember, you gave a four for him, gave a fourth-round pick for him. Think of it this way. If Trey Lance was available in this draft and it got to the fourth round, and there he sits, and you remember that Kyle Shanahan three years ago thought he was the third best player in the whole draft. Would you draft Trey Lance in the fourth round? I rest my case. Item nine, ding, Tony Romo talking ironically about how gambling and fantasy football, all that, that it's, it's made football a little less pure. And if you're a Cowboy fan and you are, you recognize the personal irony. I assume he recognized it too when he said that. He was going to remember remember his convention, his fantasy football convention, that he got in lawsuits with the NFL to try to put on, and the NFL shut his ass down. Now the NFL is in that business. And Tony Rome was saying it's a little less pure than it used to be. Oh, by the way, this is all happening in Las Vegas. The Super Bowl is in Las Vegas, something that the NFL 10 years ago, they would have never... They, they never would have allowed any of this, never would have saw any of this coming, didn't even allow Romo to play fantasy football with fans. What the NFL has done here, and uh, it's what they do, they finally decided if we can't beat them, let's join them. No, wait a minute. Let's not join them. Let's own it. If we can't beat them, let's own them. And finally, item 10. And we're going to break this down in great detail tomorrow morning. Uh, breakfast at Fishinies, 920 Dallas time. Here's what should be the decider between Zim and Ron and any other candidate, Kyle Shanahan. I, I hope the Joneses, McCarthy and McClay said, give me your present. I hope that without warning, give me your presentation. How do we stop a Kyle Shanahan tree offense? And the guy that answers that best that's the guy I'm hiring to be the defensive coordinator of your Dallas Cowboys. Uh, we will have CowboysSI.com coverage, of course, all night from Las Vegas and then breakfast at Fishinies tomorrow, 920 Dallas time. Uh, come along for the ride. It's rainy and cold, but we'll keep you warm here, Cowboys Nation, uh, on the Fish Report and on CowboysSI.com. Fish out. <laughs>